Our first example is 200 milliliters of 0.1 molar high, uh, sodium hydroxide is mixed with 200 milliliters of 0.1 molar sulfuric acid. The temperature of the resulting solution increases by 3.6 degrees Celsius. What is the molar enthalpy of reaction? So anytime we have a reaction, we need to write the balanced chemical reaction. Uh, so we're going to start. We have two moles of sodium hydroxide for every one mole of sulfuric acid because sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid. This is going to produce sodium sulfate and two moles of water. So if we look at this equation, uh, we have a two to one mole ratio for sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. And the reason that we care about limiting and excess reagents in these types of calculations is our formula, N delta RHM, so the moles of our reactant times the molar enthalpy of the reaction is equal to negative MC delta T of our surroundings. So on the left, we have our system. And on the right, we have our surroundings. So our surroundings in this case are going to be water. So it's going to be the solution itself. Our system is going to be the reaction. But this number of moles is going to be our limiting reagent number of moles. Because our limiting reagent is used up completely. And so it's going to determine how much heat is produced. So we're going to start this problem by uh, figuring out how, which is our limiting reagent. So we're going to do that by figuring out how many moles of each we have. So our moles of sodium hydroxide, uh, 0.200 liters times 0 0.10 moles per liter. And we get 0 0.020 moles. We're going to do the same for sulfuric acid. Now, upon inspection, we have 0.02 moles, moles of sulfuric acid, 0.02 moles of sodium hydroxide. However, these have different coefficients. So we're going to divide these numbers by their coefficients. So we're going to divide sodium hydroxide by 2 and divide the sulfuric acid by 1. So this number is the relative number of moles. These are directly comparable numbers. And so if we look here, we have fewer relative moles of sodium hydroxide than we do of sulfuric acid. So what that means is that NaOH is our limiting reagent. And uh, N in this case is going to be 0 0.020 moles of NaOH. So we know that our, our number of moles of reactant is 0 0.020 moles of NaOH. Uh, and we know that the mass of water that we're going to have in our reaction is going to be uh, 200 milliliters or 200 grams from the sodium hydroxide plus 200 grams from the sulfuric acid. So that's going to give us 400 grams of water. Specific heat capacity of water is 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the change in temperature of our water is positive 3.6 degrees Celsius. So we can set up our equation now to solve. So our system our reaction is going to be on the left, so that's moles times molar enthalpy, and that's going to equal the negative mc delta t of our surroundings. So we're solving for molar enthalpy of reaction, and so we're going to divide both sides by n. So the molar enthalpy of reaction is going to equal negative 
m c delta t of our surroundings divided by the moles of our system. So here we have negative 400 grams times 4.19 joules per gram degrees Celsius times 3.6 degrees Celsius. And all of that will be divided by 0 0.020 moles. And that's going to give us uh, 300 and so negative 301,680 joules per mole. Uh, and we're going to change this into kilojoules, so it's a little bit more of a reasonable number. Uh, so that's going to equal negative 302 kilojoules per mole. With sig digs, we would actually write this as negative 3.0 times 10 to the 2 kilojoules per mole. And so important here, we have a negative sign in our answer. That means that our reaction is exothermic. Uh, if you forgot the negative sign in your math and you are checking over your answer, it says in the question that the solution increases by 3.6 degrees Celsius in temperature. That means that our surroundings got hotter, so our reaction had to be exothermic. Exothermic reactions have a negative reaction enthalpy. Our second example is 5.6 grams of ethanol reacts with 10 grams of oxygen in a combustion reaction. In a simple calorimeter, which is pictured below, the temperature of 100 grams of water increases by 11.3 degrees. What is the molar enthalpy of reaction? So this calorimeter is a little bit different than what we would have seen with a coffee cup calorimeter. Uh, in this calorimeter, our ethanol burns below the water, and then the heat from the ethanol uh, combustion rises and heats the water in uh, some sort of metal container. Um, so we're still going to do the analysis the same way we would have before. So we're going to start with a balanced chemical reaction. So ethanol is C2H5OH. Uh, if you forget the formulas for any organic compounds, you can find them on pages, uh, five, I believe, four and five in your data booklet, the thermochemical table. Uh, when we combust something, we combine it with oxygen and we form uh, carbon dioxide and water vapor. So anytime we're combusting in an open environment, we're forming water vapor. Um, okay, so we're gonna balance this reaction now. Uh, we're going to put a two in front of our carbon dioxide to balance out our carbons. We'll put a three in front of our water to balance out our hydrogens. That gives us a total of four oxygens from CO2 plus three from water, so we have seven. We have one in ethanol, so now we need six more. So we put a three here. So we have a balanced reaction. Next up is gonna be determining our limiting reagent. So we're gonna start by finding the moles of each. So the moles of ethanol, uh, we have the mass, so we're gonna divide mass by molar mass. So 5.6 grams divided by uh, 46.08 grams per mole. And that gives us an answer of uh, 0 0.122 moles. We're going to do the same thing with oxygen. So we have 10 grams of oxygen. And oxygen has a molar mass of 32 because it's diatomic. And that gives us 0 0.313 moles. Now we can't compare these numbers directly because we have different coefficients in front of ethanol and oxygen. So we need to divide them both by their coefficients. So we're gonna divide this by one because there's a coefficient of one in front of ethanol. And we're gonna divide this by three because there's a coefficient of three in front of oxygen. And we get 0 0.104 moles versus 0 0.122 moles. So what that tells us is that oxygen is the limiting reagent. And in our next step, when we do our calculation with moles, we're going to use 0 0.313 moles. So really, really important here. Um, we are going to uh, 
use the number of moles we actually have because we can bust, we use all of these moles of oxygen. We're not going to use this relative number of moles. The reason we can't use ethanol here is that we're not going to actually use up all of our ethanol. There's going to be a little bit left after the reaction. Okay, so in this reaction, our system is our ethanol and our oxygen reaction. And we know that the, from the last step, the number of moles is 0 0.31. And I'm going to write it the full number this time before I plug it into an equation. Uh, the mass of our surroundings, so the mass of water, is 100 grams. We don't add the mass of ethanol or oxygen to that. Uh, our specific heat capacity of water is 4.19 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And our change in temperature is positive 11.3 degrees Celsius. So that tells us that this reaction is exothermic and our molar enthalpy of reaction should be negative. So we're going to write down our equation now. So N delta RHM equals negative MC delta T. And again, we're solving for this molar enthalpy of reaction. So we can rearrange this as our molar enthalpy of reaction equals negative mc delta t of our surroundings divided by the moles of our system. And that's going to equal negative uh, 100 grams times 4.19 joules per gram degrees Celsius times 11.3 degrees Celsius, all divided by 0 0.3125 moles. And that's going to equal negative 15,151 joules per mole or uh, negative 15 kilojoules per mole. And that's in relation to oxygen. So that's our molar enthalpy of reaction for O2. If we wanted to find what it was for uh, ethanol, we're going to do that on our next page. So we just determined that the uh, molar enthalpy of reaction for the reaction described above is negative 15 kilojoules per mole of oxygen. Now we can figure out what this molar enthalpy of reaction is in terms of ethanol. So we could just write this again. So we can say our molar enthalpy of reaction is equal to negative 15 kilojoules per one mole of oxygen. And we're gonna just multiply this by our mole ratio. So we have three moles of oxygen. So here, we oxygen is on the bottom of our fraction, so it goes on the top of our mole ratio. And we're gonna divide that by one mole of ethanol. And that's going to give us uh, a molar enthalpy of negative 45 kilojoules per mole of ethanol. Now I'm going to quickly show you um, what our molar enthalpy of reaction would have been had we used um, the moles of ethanol in our calculation originally, so that 0 0.122 moles of ethanol for, that we found earlier. So our molar enthalpy of reaction would have been uh, 100 grams of water times 4.19 joules per gram degrees Celsius times 11.3 degrees Celsius divided by 0 0.122 moles and that's going to give us an answer of uh, 38,960 uh, joules per mole or negative 39 kilojoules per mole. And the reason that it's lower is in this calculation, we assume that all of the ethanol burns and therefore contributes to the energy produced. However, only some of the ethanol burns. So we're actually getting more energy per mole of ethanol than we would think if we did the reaction or the calculation with the wrong limiting reagent.